Hello, today I would like to show you a little bit about using the Catalona Dots pen and I'm going to be doing a C scene and I shall be putting on a little bit of watercolour at the end. So I will describe what I'm doing through. If you've not used the pen before it's quite unusual but it creates some fantastic effects. So I hope you enjoy and thank you for joining me. This is the materials that I'm going to be using. I'll be working with the Catalola Dots pen, which I'll show you in a little more detail in a minute. The Dots pad, which is a really beautiful um, heavyweight cartridge paper and some SAA watercolours. Uh, they'll be going on at the end and I'll tell you what colours I use as I use them. So now we'll start looking at the pen. Um, just take the cap off here. And then you can see the, the nib there. There's a little button and when you press the button once it starts working at the slow speed and then you can double press it and it will move to the high speed. Um, single, single button operation so double press it again and it'll go back to slow speed and single press it again and it'll stop. I've got the power cable attached here. It does have a, a rechargeable battery in it, which will last about half an hour, 40 minutes. So I've got it connected up to the power source. I'm starting off with the pen on the slow speed and this allows me much more control uh, and allows me to get a feel for where I'm working and how, it, how it's all going. Um, I find that I want to put a basic covering of the pen down where I want it to be to start off with and the slow speed just makes me feel a little bit more in control. This area here is some old wooden stakes that are sticking out of the sea and I believe it was an old um, pier or it might have been part of a, of a groin, I'm not sure, but it's, it's all just some rotten wood sticking out of the sea, but I think it's rather beautiful. I am starting to build up areas where I know I'm going to have more shadow, um, but I'm not worrying too much about the detail at this stage. I'm bringing in now the wave coming forward, breaking forward from the uh, wooden stakes, and I just want to start to get, to get the sense uh, of that crushing wave, that sort of roll of the wave, so I'm using the pen to give me some direction. This is where my big splash comes up from where the wave hits the, the wood. Uh, so I don't want to put too much detail in here. This is very light. It's more going to be visible by what goes on behind it. You can hear that I've now gone over to the fast speed. Um, this is for a couple of reasons. One, I now want to cover some ground, so I want to get on to the interesting part of adding the detail in. But also, I've been using the pen for a few minutes, so I'm a bit more confident about how the marks are coming down, uh, how I'm holding it, and it just feels more comfortable, so I've gone over to the fast speed now. And again, I'm blocking in. I'm not putting in too much detail. I just want to be able to see where I'm going with all of this, and I'll come back and put another layer of detail in shortly. It's more about positioning everything at this stage. I'm going to put some horizontal lines here for the sea behind uh, the crashing waves. And this is just about um, trying to get the water to look flat. I would recommend that you hold the pen vertically. It seems to be easier to use vertically. I'm putting it on a slight angle here just so that you can see what I'm doing. I didn't want to block the camera. If you 
trying to get the effect of those ripples on the sea behind the waves in this wood. I love the effects the dots give you. It's, it's quite a mesmerising process to work with. I'm bringing in a slightly stronger um, colour here. So I'm using the, the pen and I'm not moving it around so quickly. It's creating a denser set of dots and this is giving me a bit more shadow. And this is how you build up your, your texture and your tone within this. And I definitely find it easier to start light and then gradually build it. I'm trying to work in behind where my splash is. So I'm drawing in the negative. Taking my time and going around the edge of that wave, just building up that shape. It's an incredibly comfortable pen to hold. I thought when I first saw it that it was gonna you were gonna feel those vibrations in there, but you don't. It's just a beautifully comfortable pen to hold. See that splash emerging there now. And I'm up on the high speed here and I'm building my shadow underneath that crashing wave. So again, having got all of my uh, shading and shapes roughed in, now I can come back in and add the detail. So here there's another piece of that wood within the foam, so I just want to make that dark stand out. In fact, this is the piece of wood that the wave is crashing against. You just go over repeatedly and it, it builds up to a really beautiful dark tone. Not rushing it, just gradually building that up. And I think the whole whole picture probably took me a couple of hours. You can see the quicker that you move the pen around, the the lighter the spattering of dots, and the slower that you move it, the more you can get these really detailed lines and really dark marks. Coming back to the other side, uh, this is where I had originally just roughed in where these shapes were going to be. So now's the time to come back in and put all of my detail and get all my strength of colour, all my shadows in there. And there's quite a few little cracks and crevices and the pen is fantastic for that. It's also really good for fur because you can build these really strong, uh, crisp little lines within the dots. I just move the pen around roughly to get general shading and then I come in with a, a crisp line and that's just slowing the pen down slightly and, and making that um, stay in that, that close quarters so you get those, those lines showing up.
I'm looking at the edge of the foam again I'm just using the pen for shading so I'm, I'm moving the pen around uh, generally to give me shadow and then where I want my shadow to be darker I just move the pen around a little bit more slowly crispen up some of those little lines that I put in there continuous building process these shadows. Now, earlier on I roughed in where I wanted these uh, darker areas in the foreground to be and these are like the gaps in the foam. This is where all that, that sea foam is along the edge so I'm, I'm now colouring in the negative shape as it were, the, the actual shape of the uh, water that's showing through the little gaps. Building my second rolling wave at the front, again just building those shadows just generally and then coming back in with a bit more detail where I want it darker. And here we have the finished uh, dots pen drawing and I think on its own it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but for the purpose of this, I'm going to add a little bit of watercolour just to show you how we can we can add colour to this. Uh, you do need to allow the dots pen to dry. It is water um, fast when it is completely dry, but it does take an hour or so for that ink to fully fully dry out. Um, so I've allowed this to have a dry, and I've come back in. First of all. First of all, I added some water to the paper, and although this is a heavy-duty cartridge paper, it is heavy enough to take adding water, and you can do wet and wet washes onto it. So it's a brilliant paper. I really like it. I'm using my a couple of blues here, ultramarine, and I think it was a, a phthalo blue, a little bit of. And I'm putting out that blue again around the top of where that foam breaks the skyline um, just to make it more visible, just putting a bit more blue around it to make it more, more visible. Now here I've taken my ultramarine and I've added a little bit of the Payne's Grey green shade um, to give me this sea colour for the distance and I'm working horizontally because the sea tends to come across in bands of colour and this isn't a full painting this is this is just putting a touch of colour onto your drawing now I've added a, a little bit of the quinacridone gold into this as I come forward just greening that sea up a little bit And just making sure I go round the shape of the of the foam so that that stays visible. And I keep just adding a little bit more of that um, gold into it as I come forward just brightening the colour as it comes towards you. I live on the east coast here and we get these amazing colour seas. Dropped a bit but that's okay I can wipe it out. Now I've got a bit of my quinacridone gold and some yellow ochre that I'm using to put in a bit of shading into the foam itself, into that rolling wave. I'm 
and just leaving the white of the paper showing through as well. Then I'm using, I've got some of my ultramarine and I've got some burnt sienna. It's more ultramarine than anything, but just to give me this uh, grey colour that I want for putting into the boil of the foam. I think of this not so much as creating a painting, because I've done the drawing with the dots pen. To me this is more just colourising, it's just adding a little bit, a touch of colour to it. Now I've put some colour on, now I have a clean damp brush and I'm taking a lot of the colour out again and that just makes it a much softer edge, which I quite like for the foam of the water. Got a slightly darker version of that uh, grey colour now. That's dropping in some shadow underneath the wave and also for these areas within the, the foam in the foreground. Something else that I did add to the sea at the background, which you can't really see in this shot, but I'll try and um, photograph it, uh, is I put a little bit of the SAA's silver paint into it. And it is stunning colour when you're painting the sea, because if you use it mixed in with what you're creating the sea colour with, it creates this beautiful little shimmer on the edge of the water. And a bit more of my blue grey underneath the edge of the wave just to give me some shadow. Now here I've got my burnt sienna and I'll be adding some ultramarine and some gold and some of the quinacridone gold as well into this. So all those gorgeous warm colours. So just adding that ultramarine in just gives you that really beautiful strong shadow. Never be afraid of a shadow. And the beautiful texture that you get from those dots is lovely just coming through uh, on those those bits of wood. I like those, which is why I don't want it to be a proper painting. I just want to add some colour. brush I'm using here is the SAA All Rounder. It's one of their silver brushes and they get a beautiful point so I haven't needed to change brushes. I'm just using the same brush the whole way through. Just adding a little bit more of that silver in just for the shimmer. So here I've got my blue-grey and I have added some silver into this because again I quite like the shimmer on it. Be careful that I don't lose all of the white and make it too dark. So again, just coming back in with my damp brush and taking some of it out and that just softens it all down. A 
little bit of extra strength of shadow in a few places. There we have it now with the added colour to it, which I, I think is lovely as well. It just adds a different dimension to it. But I really enjoy using the dots pen. I hope you'll have a go and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you for watching.